action and how to achieve next generation FP&A. Thank you for joining today. I'm Thomas Ironstone, Manager of Corporate Performance Management and Business Intelligence at Corporate Renaissance Group, acquisitive company, and we're a premier board partner. With Corporate Renaissance Group, we really focus on uh, proven business technologies that drive performance across the entire, entire organization. We look to be your one-stop shop for technologies that are built to address your unique business challenges. With our team, we have certified experts, leading individuals, CPAs, and uh, MBAs that have both the understanding of the industries, the verticals, your business challenges, as well as technological understanding as well to help make sure that we deliver the right solution for your organization. And we leverage a unique toolkit of modern systems to get you where you need to go. In our portfolio of business applications, we cover the gamut from ERP systems, so enterprise resource planning, uh, mainly in dynamics. However, our other solutions, we do integrate with a variety of different other ERP systems as well. We also have unique uh, solutions such as allocate cost allocation tools, as well as retail based uh, applications. From a collaboration and productivity standpoint, uh, we deal in SharePoint Teams Office 365. And from a BI and reporting standpoint, we deliver board as well as other systems. And we're going to be focusing today on uh, board, which is the go to platform. Uh, we have talent management solutions, uh, which includes Emperform as well as D365 HR. From a corporate performance management and budgeting uh, standpoint, we uh, mainly deal in board. However, we have other platforms in our toolkit. And we also offer consulting services and value-based management uh, around strategic planning, enterprise dashboards, and activity-based costing and shared services. A little bit about our practice. We've uh, been in business for over 30 years, and we really help organizations transform how they operate, whether that's in ERP, FP&A, BI, HR management, and much more. We partner with leading solution uh, vendors, including Microsoft and Board, uh, to ensure our clients have access to uh, best-in-class systems to help meet th their challenges of the digital world. And with our expert guidance, we help make sure that the solution is designed to meet the needs of your organization for now and into the future. The agenda for today, uh, we're going to be discussing a bit about the changing landscape of FP&A. Then we're going to be getting into how board can help transform budgeting, planning, and reporting. We're going to cover a real-world example and then go into a board demonstration. We asked uh, top FP&A leaders uh, as far as what are their main challenges in the wake of all of the things that uh, all of our organizations and various geographic regions have experienced over the past uh, couple of years. And the main things that are coming up we're finding from an FP&A standpoint tend to be around projections, forecasting, reporting, data. And uh, with this, we need to understand how we can help overcome those challenges and uh, make sure that we're equipping our client base with the right toolkits to overcome those hurdles. And with that, we need Board. Board is recognized by the Gartner with over 3,000 customers worldwide. It is considered the number one decision-making platform, offering budgeting, forecasting, scorecards, as well as advanced analytics. So some of the key features that uh, we ourselves, when we did our due, dil due diligence looking for uh, the right platform to help meet our clients' needs, we found that Board can deliver robust planning, budgeting, forecasting, as well as scale into reporting, scorecarding, perform uh, financial consolidation across uh, multi-company, uh, multi ERP, as well as multi-currency organizations, as well as do all types of other modeling, such as profitability modeling and optimization, as well as running analysis and simulations. With Board, it's truly unique in that it unifies business intelligence, predictive analytics, and performance management. And by saying that, it's truly an all-in-one platform. It's not a module-based application in the sense that it's not cobbled together multiple different uh, code bases and tools to deliver multiple offerings. With Board, it's truly all-in-one in the sense that with the single platform and the toolkit, it can be used to deploy planning, budgeting, and forecasting, financial consolidation, strategic management, so planning, budgeting, and forecasting, it has very robust, rich features from a dashboarding standpoint, so you can integrate with multiple systems, whether it's financial or non-financial data, and you can mash that all together into a dashboard. You can use uh, Board's uh, Beam engine, which is uh, 
allowing individuals to do predictive analytics and do clustering. For business users, it delivers very high-powered self-service analytics, analytics and reporting. So you don't no longer have to uh, prepare reports, uh, whether you're the finance team or uh, a business analyst or in the IT group, where you might be constantly getting requests to pull data and send it out to individuals. With Board, it's truly self-service in the sense that it provides an interactive platform that individuals can run their own report, drill down, uh, they can uh, uh, rejig the, the data the data and layouts to view the data in multiple different ways. And of course, doing uh, what if simulations and forecasting, that's uh, truly critical now as it is uh, has been any as it, as it has been any point in time where you can pull in data, do scenarios, be able to test your assumptions which may have gone into your your planning your planning process to understand. Uh, what are the different scenarios and what's the impact on your financials, whether it's PL, balance sheet, and cash flow? With the board platform, it can tap into virtually uh, any system. So, whether that's your ERP, so your financial systems, your enterprise resource planning platform, uh, it can tap into your CRM, so your customer relationship management systems, and it can also tap into legacy systems. So, whether it's in cloud or on premise, Board provides the uh, capabilities to tap into those different data sources. You might also invest the time in developing a data warehouse. Board can also tap into your data warehouse to pull in the data. Um, you might have already applied different business logic and such in there, and you want to continue to leverage that. And your data warehouse might be pulling in data from different sources as well. So Board can actually leverage that data uh, on top of other systems. If you have flat file data, Board can uh, easily ingest flat file data as well. And if you have data that's living in spreadsheets, uh, that's not living in a formal database, you can actually load that into the board platform. And then you can even start using board as a data entry tool on, on a go forward basis so that the data is stored in a formal database uh, platform. And from a functionality standpoint, knowing that board can tap into all of these different data sets, you can apply all of your business logic, your rollups, your structures and reporting frameworks to then rapidly deploy business intelligence, so scorecard, dashboard, and reporting and analytics. On the performance management side, you can deploy budgeting, planning, and forecasting. And with Board's very unique uh, modeling toolkit, you can have a very tailored uh, budgeting platform for yourselves that meets your organization's specific needs, whether that's look, feel, uh, the calculations that best mirror the requirements for your organization. As well, it can be used to deploy uh, stra strategy management, and what that is is around uh, balanced scorecards, strategy maps, initiative tracking, um, as well as financial consolidation. So if you have multiple entities, multiple companies that are in even multiple currencies, and they could even have different ERPs, board can tap into all of that, merge it all together, apply, let's say as an example, uh, master COA, chart of account structure, facilitate eliminations to provide all of your uh, consolidated financial reporting needs. And then on the predictive analytics side, you can use the Beam Engine to run forecasting, simulation, clustering, as well as statistical functions. So how does Board differ from uh, old business intelligence and planning tools? Where Board differs is that it's truly integrated. So as I mentioned, Board is a single all-in-one toolkit, meaning that with the single toolkit, you can deploy BI, analytics, CPM, operational planning all in one. It's not a cobbled together platform with multiple code bases with different interfaces. You can truly deploy everything all in one with one cohesive experience. Board is truly self-service in the sense that it, there's no programming. So you're not scripting code or anything of that nature. It's uh, using the board in UI in, uh, user interface to um, deploy your different applications. So building out all of the structures, the templates, the layouts, the calculation, the business logic, it's all very visually driven through the board user interface. It's very flexible in the sense that we're able to use the board platform to continue to grow and adapt as your organization changes. So as you have, a, as an example, new uh, roll-up structures, new orga organizational hierarchies, maybe you're getting into a new, um, line of business as an example, board can continue to adapt. You can build out more components to your models and have that feed into the overall application. 
from a simulation standpoint, so board, board provides advanced data entry capabilities, so you can enter in data at multiple levels of hierarchies and uh, uh, do gymnastics around the data, which other applications struggle to do. And from a total cost of ownership standpoint, because board is truly an all-in-one platform, the really huge value proposition here is that you don't need to buy a specific uh, BI tool, a different planning tool, as well as all these custom applications that you might need for uh, strategy management, uh, HR analysis, things like that. With board, it's a truly robust, uh, all-in-one encompassing uh, planning and uh, analytics platform. Since Board has been around uh, for uh, for many years now, it's been operating globally and it's achieved over 3,500 customers globally. So they range in size and industry, so from a, some of the top multinationals to some uh, mid-sized firms, and whether that's in um, uh, various verticals from manufacturing, banking, public sector, not-for-profit, sports and entertainment, you name it, uh, Board has uh, customers that are uh, have had very successful deployments of the platform for many different purposes. So to give a quick real-world example, um, Ottawa Sports and Entertainment Group deployed the Board uh, platform. And with Board, uh, they're able to uh, address their multiple challenges. So they organization is comprised of over 10 companies with over 34 departments, two professional sports franchises. Uh, they have complex of uh, 360,000 square foot shopping centers, uh, an urban park, you name it. So having a variety of these different components with uh, different uh, planning requirements and reporting requirements, uh, the board platform truly meet the, meet the needs from the flexibility standpoint. So they needed to deliver financial reporting, ability to execute scenario planning and forecasting capabilities. And using the board platform, they're able to streamline this across all of the entities, uh, facilitate data allocations, as well as audit trails, and integration with their ERP system, which was Microsoft Dynamics, as well as their ticketing system. Now to get in a bit of the uh, next generation FP&A functionality. So as I've been mentioning, and I, and I hope this hits home, is that Board is a truly uh, uh, all-in-one platform when it comes to your planning, reporting, and analysis needs. So it does everything from strategic planning, feeding through to budgeting, planning, forecasting, as well as your financial planning, consolidation, and your dashboarding. And you can link it in various different ways, have your very tailored looking application, applications, reports, uh, templates to meet your specific needs for your organization with all, in one holistic solution. So from a financial reporting standpoint, board can be deployed to facilitate all of your financial and management reporting needs. So tapping into your ERP system, pulling in your chart of accounts, your trial balances, your GL transactions, having that feed through report mapping logic, which we typically do uh, range-based, which I'll demonstrate in the, uh, in the demonstration a little bit later, and have that feed into all of your financials. And so with Board, it's, it has report writer capabilities uh, using uh, our framework that we call Report Central. And you can layer in as well all type of graphical functionality on top of that. So this is where Board truly stands out from other applications, is that on a single page you can have tables, uh, you can have layouts of your financials as well as graphicals, as well as um, all types of different workflow, all in a single screen, all in one single application to meet your exact needs. Board also offers the ability to do briefing books. And so, uh, you know, we've all been around the block and typically in uh, senior management, uh, ELT meetings, or even board meetings, um, normally that hard copy printout or, or static uh, PDF copy of um, quarterly report or monthly report or annual report, it, we, everyone always would have the hard copy printout. And, or they might be looking up at their screen, which might be uh, from a PDF or maybe even PowerPoint as an example. Someone will look at a particular uh, item in that report and um, they might say, where did that number come from? And because it's a static copy, uh, we weren't able to answer those, uh, the question on the spot or the number might have looked off and so we end up losing the people at that point in time. 
So with board, it provides the ability to do interactive briefing books uh, where you can actually have all your layouts, your graphics, your commentary, uh, your financials in an, in an interactive flipbook package where individuals can actually drill into the data, they can filter, and it still provides that same view that they might be uh, familiar with from a, a normal, say, printout package that they've had before. And of course, if you want to, you can also print that out to PDF, but at the end of the day, uh, the goal is to make those meetings interactive and allow uh, us to answer those questions in those meetings as opposed to losing them on the spot. Of course, from an FP&A standpoint, where would we be without Excel? And from our presentation standpoints, we still need to prepare PowerPoints. And in Word, we might have uh, particular Word packages that might, as an example, be for quarterly annual reports. And with those, Board provides uh, very tight integration to Microsoft Office. So you can actually have data feeding from the board platform. So pulling your actuals, your planning data, your financial, non-financial data into your PowerPoint presentations, into your, uh, into your Word documents, as well as in the Word document, you might have in-text references to particular uh, data points. So as an example, you might have a uh, reference to uh, revenue. You might have uh, a, a calculation to say, uh, growth, and you can have that all within the text within the Word document. And board, it'll link back to the board database, and you can actually uh, uh, roll those documents over, say, to the next month or the next period, and everything in that document gets updated that is linked back to board. So quite powerful. And of course, in Excel, you can have the data linked back to board data, whether, again, actuals or budgets financials, non-financials, and you can even leverage Excel if, uh, as a data entry uh, template as well. So we'll go through actually showing the board interface and how you can enter data in the board platform through your web browser. However, you can also leverage the Office add-in uh, through Excel to even write data back to the board database. So quite powerful. From a graphic standpoint, as I mentioned, board can tap into a variety of different data sources, whether it's financial or non-financial. And using the board drag and drop toolkit, you can pull together different objects on the screen, pointing, pointing to different data sets and have your mashup of data visualized in one screen, whether it's financials or non-financials or different cuts of the data for different audiences. From a planning standpoint, board has a very powerful ability to do uh, modeling. And with modeling, you can set up uh, your driver-based planning at a very granular level. So you can set up all of your driver-based tables. So whether it's uh, you know simple things like units and price, um, it could be costs as an example, and you can have all your different calculations feeding off those different rate tables and can crunch the data at a very granular level. So as an example, taking uh, a price table and crunching down the calculation against volumes at the customer product day level as an example. From a reforecasting standpoint, uh, board will tap in to your ERP system. And when you do your, your forecasts, it'll pull in your actuals and allow you to do your uh, forecasts, whether it's to the end of the year or on a rolling basis. So organizations are doing this more and more frequently now as the uh, environment uh, changes around us. And of course, I mentioned scenarios and simulations. You can spin up different uh, versions of your, of your plan, worst case, best case scenario as an example and report on those and do comparisons. Another area where board really differs from other applications is the ability to um, configure a very tailored workflow to your organization. So if you have very specific steps that you and your organization follow when it comes to say, uh, planning and budgeting and forecasting, how approvals work as an example, the steps in the process, or if it's around your month end process or your financial consolidation process, Board provides the ability to do very structured uh, visual workflow that will meet your organization's specific needs. On top of financial and volumetric data, Board can also store text, comments, and documents, and this can be at a multidimensional level. So wherever we have a, say, data entry template where we might be inputting uh, budget data, we might be doing variance analysis, you can allow individuals to uh, input comments, text, as well as uh, append a document. So if there's a supporting document or a contract, as an example, or a schedule of maybe another calculation that might have been done in a spreadsheet to support a particular data point, 
you can actually allow the individual to append that document so when someone else is reviewing it, they can see that file as well. From an accessibility standpoint, um, this has been critical when it comes to whether it's around our budget cycle, forecasting cycle, month end cycle, we want to make sure that board is accessible. So obviously boards in the cloud, it can be accessed through your browser 24 seven. However, it can uh, provide, as I mentioned, integration to other applications such as uh, uh, Microsoft Office. So if you have your packages that are linked back to board data and you need to refresh those, you can get those refreshed on the fly. And so it goes away from having this um, intermittent uh, copies that are downloaded of Excel files where people might have be living in their inboxes or on their machine or maybe um, in uh, uh, a shared folder somewhere. However, that data might be static or might have, uh, 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 have be already, um, already stale, already uh, in the past at that point. So with Board, it actually, if you're accessing the data through the actual board application, the data is up to date, or if you're accessing the data through your Excel spreadsheets, PowerPoint templates, Word documents, you can ensure those are also refreshed and up to date as well. You no longer have to copy and paste those tables into those documents. And then obviously preparing for the future, if you have a very data rich organization in the sense that you have some uh, volumetric type data, uh, whether your uh, organization is heavily impacted by, uh, by trends uh, within, it, within the environment, such as uh, population growth as an example, weather as another example, you can start using these different volumetrics to help uh, run predictive analytics simulations within inside the platform to help you plan. And so you can also do clustering. So as an example, if you're looking at sales data uh, for your organization and you want to be able to cluster it in different groupings and understand how those are trending over time, you can use board's clustering functionality to do uh, multivariate analysis as well. In addition, if you want, uh, board also has, as I mentioned, strategic management capabilities. So building out all your balanced scorecards with your themes, objectives, metrics, and uh, you can actually track those and report on those within the platform. Build out uh, visual depictions of that in a, in a strategy map view where you can have all the cause and effect linkages. You can see how the leading indicators might be impacting the lagging indicators. So all that being said, let's dive in. We'll take a look. All right, so diving into the board platform. As you'll see, I'm logged in through my web browser. And so with the board application, uh, as I'll go through some of these examples, one key thing, and I really hope the point hits home, is that board is entirely configurable. So all the layouts, the look and feel, it can all be ta tailored to your organization's specific needs. The board is essentially a canvas where you can drag and drop, put your different objects, set up your templates, you can click through. If you imagine it in a sense as, uh, say you have an Excel uh, document or an Excel workbook, can you set up links to jump to different tabs and different tabs might have, as an example, a dashboard, it might have a financial statement, it might have a data entry uh, template. In a very uh, simple sense, you can think of it that way where I'm jumping to different things. It's all within, say, uh, a single environment. It allows me to jump to those different items and you can lay out those screens however you need to with all of the different business logic and workflow required. So I'm going to start off uh, just to go through a, an example here. I'm going to put on my executive hat and as we know from an FPA standpoint, uh, when we go through our monthly cadence with the month end process, uh, update our financials, we need to update our forecasts, and then uh, we need to share those results with the executive team so they can see where we're standing. And that typically will ha obviously happen around the month end process. And there might be some stuff that happens throughout the month, such as uh, reporting around sales data as an example, pipeline data as an example. And so now again with my executive hat, uh, we'll say the month end is behind us. Uh, I'm as the uh, president or CEO, I wanna see how we're uh, functioning holistically across the organization. So this can be deployed to me in many different ways, but there might, as an example, I might have some key summary indicators that I'll look at. It might be a ge geographical overview, a sales overview, profitability overview, maybe looking at EBITDA. And then I might also, as I discussed a bit about briefing books, there might be a particular monthly package that is typically provided to me. 
So those might be my key go-to points as the president, as the, CEO, as the CEO, or maybe COO that I might look at to see how we're performing. And then I wanna see across the organization when I'm looking at the different uh, horizontal views, whether it's this, how the sales team performing, operational team performing, looking at our financial results, and then maybe do some ad hoc analysis. So I'm gonna start off here, the first thing, and in my case, I might look at uh, profitability, how we're doing from an EBITDA standpoint. So with my organization, there's uh, multiple companies report into me, and I wanna see the current snapshot, how we're performing at this point in time. So after month end, I can see how we're performing against right now, how we're performing against the forecast. So here we'll see uh, EBITDA by company A, B, and C, and D, how actuals are looking against the, the latest forecast. And then down below, have as, as an example, more of a financial statement view where we see a, a mini P&L going down to EBITDA, how we're doing for sales and all of direct and indirect costs, and maybe break it down into a waterfall so I can see um, where the starting point is and what the variance is getting down to uh, maybe our target. And then different uh, particular calculated metrics I might be looking at as an example how our profitability is relative to sales. And with that, I can continue to drill into it if I wanna look at, as an example, a particular vertical group with inside the organization. I might wanna see how my industrials group is doing. So I'll see how industrial is doing across all of the entities. I'll have the water, same waterfall breakdown, you name it. And then maybe within the waterfall group, there might be another roll up where I might be looking at a particular uh, grouping. So maybe the instruments group within industrial, I'll see how, how the instrument's doing. And I can continue to filter, I could drill down if I wanted to. And the point here is that as the um, president or C, uh, CEO, I would have particular snapshots and views of data, particular metrics that would be very relevant to me. And then I might have particular items I might wanna continue to drill into to answer some of the questions that I might have. So normally I might be looking at actuals, obviously. I might wanna see how we're performing year to date. I might wanna see how we're performing just for this current past month. So instead of year to date, I might wanna see how we're doing just for the month. And of course, on a rolling basis, I might wanna see how we've been doing over the last 12 months. So you can be very dynamic in the sense of what are those comparatives that I might want to look at. And you can have many, many different filters and things like that on the screen that you want to. However, uh, when we, as the CEO, I might have very specific items that I want in a box I might want to do my common analysis in. I don't wanna recreate this all the time. So I can set this up in such a way that I have my specific time period selections, I have my particular comparison selections where my, I might always have a default to forecast. However, I might also wanna see how we're performing against prior year and maybe have a look how we're performing against the original base budget. If that was provided to the board, however, I'm managing my forecast and that's the thing that's most important to me at this point in time. So now taking a step back, I looked at the EBITDA analysis. I might maybe look at it the geographical standpoint. So while I have different companies rolling into me, they might be operating across different geographic regions. So I know that uh, there might be some particular trends that are happening in maybe different parts of the world where we have operations and I wanna see how that's performing. And so again, we're looking at those same comparatives, whether it's the time period, current year to date, last 12 months, my same comparisons. So if it's uh, budget prior year against forecast or looking at the different slices, whether it's the different industry groups, product families or any other dimensionality I have in my data set. And with these graphicals, I might be looking at sales or I might wanna look at it from EBITDA. Again, these are just particular key metrics that might be relevant to me as the president or CEO. Uh, however, for different organizations based on uh, uh, the industry, uh, based on the organizational strategy, there might be other different metrics that are uh, critical to uh, 
to the head of the organization or the business leaders of the organization. So these can be laid out many different ways with different metrics, with different slices of data. So taking a step back again, I looked at my profitability, I looked at my geographical overview. Now one thing I really wanna draw your attention to uh, is the briefing book concept. So we talked about the old, the old school way that we always did it before with the printouts, the PDFs, and we can still continue to do that. However, um, me being a forward-looking CEO, president of this organization, I want to have that same briefing book, but I want to have it automatically updated with the updated commentary, updated financials. So as the financials get updated, this is uh, automatically updated. I might want to even be able to drill into that. So if there's a particular data point, I'm looking at revenue as an example. I want to drill into the data point and see all of, all of the um, that GL transactions that are actually hitting that if I really wanted to. So I can make that very interactive um, and actually uh, drill into the data. I can filter, look at different time periods. Again, get all my standard financials just because uh, we need, need to have those obviously as well as graphical views of the data. So I can have all my trend-based data that automatically gets updated. So as this report gets rolled over month over month or quarter over quarter, or year over year, the briefing book will get updated and I can even go back and look at a, an older version of it. And it'll have all of the corresponding commentary as well. All of the graphical views, the waterfalls, the conditional formatting and charts, you name it. it it's all there and available to us. All right, so with that, um, actually one thing, I'll just quickly go back for a second. I mentioned to you that you can have that printed out if you wanted to uh, while it's interactive. You can actually export it out as an example, the printable report. So whether that's PDF, Word, PowerPoint, or just a screenshot, you can have that printed out. And you can even set up subscriptions for yourself. So if I wanted to set up a subscription, I can set up a name the format that it's delivered to me, the frequency on when it's delivered to me. So if I wanna set it maybe around the 10th day of every month, I can do something like that, have a particular email to remind me why I'm receiving this. And then I can sort of set it and forget it, so to speak. And then that will come and I'll get those uh, delivered to me in those different formats. And that can be applied for not just the briefing book, it can be applied for a dashboard, it can be applied for a particular financial statements, you name it. All right, next up, what I wanna show you as well is the concept of, uh, we looked at some of the graphical views, we looked at the briefing book view, uh, we talked about Microsoft Office integration. So with this, you might have current Word packages that you might uh, update, and so you, you know some of that stuff you might do in an interactive briefing book, but some of that stuff you might decide to leave in uh, your Word documents because you have very particular formatting that you do and it goes out to the board as an example. You can leverage that and actually uh, have board objects and tables built right into that Word document. And so with that, with this example I'll show you, I'm just going to pull this up. And the idea here is you have your, say your own Word package, obviously with your table of contents. And then you start getting into the particular data points and charts. So these are actual board objects. So with the board object, it's connected to board data. We can refresh it. So if we're rolling this uh, package over from say Q1 to Q2, I can uh, save the Word document as an example, Q1 um, 2022 to Q2 2022, change the filters, all the data in the Word document gets updated. And that applies obviously to charts and tables in the particular package, but it also applies to in-text references that I mentioned earlier. And this is truly unique and powerful in the sense that you might have standard sets of commentary. So obviously, um, you know, the analysis and the analytical views that we input into the documents, you know, that, that part never goes away. However, there might be some constant items that we're always updating in the commentary that might, as an example, make reference to year-to-date sales. And with that, it might be referring to the particular month that's currently selected. 
as well as referring back to the sales uh, metric that's pulling from the board platform, and then even do a calculation so we can say that what the growth was over uh, last year against budget. And so as you change the filter selection, say from Q1 to Q2, all of that gets updated and you no longer have to go through, read through all of the reports and tables and update everything manually. Everything in the document gets updated that's linked back to board. And this is a huge time saver and very, very powerful. And if I scroll down here, you'll see a few different examples of different tables and in-text references, uh, some financial views, you name it. So you can do a lot with this and it's very, very powerful. Similar concept with PowerPoint. So you might have a standard PowerPoint presentation. So while you could bring, do your presentation directly with inside the board platform, display the data, have your different charts and commentary, you might have a very specific PowerPoint presentation that you still wanna to continue to leverage. And you can actually link board, uh, link it back to board. So same idea as I showed you in Word where we had particular objects, uh, it, it applies here as well. So I might have particular um, uh, charts of data, tables of data, references of different tables, and all of this will get updated as it's linked back to the board database as well. And you can roll this over, whether it's period over period, you know, month over month, quarter over quarter, year over year, same idea. Uh, you no longer have to go through and as, you, as you're likely doing today, where you're uh, taking screenshots of things pasting it into your presentations, into your Word documents, you can have all that updated on the fly. And obviously we know that that's very risky doing it the way we do it today where we're taking those screenshots because if something gets updated in our financials or in the budget data or if we miss something, then we have to, we literally have to go through everything. It just, it, it can be a nightmare and it's very manual. So with this, it takes away all of that headache and that uh, unease that we have that we might have missed something as well. All right, so we we're talking a bit about some of the horizontal views. So obviously, uh, again, as my, as my CEO president had on, I looked at the very high level uh, views of data that I wanna see how our organization is performing, how we're performing against uh, budget, what the forecast looks like, all the standard financials and views that we, as uh, an FP&A leader, that we have to provide to the executive team. In addition to that, there might be other cross sections of data from a horizontal standpoint where we need to provide uh, the executive team with uh, views of sales data, the pipeline, how we're doing it from an operational standpoint. So you can have all that feeding into the board platform as well, where we might be looking at, as an example, what does our pipeline look like? And so while um, the, uh, you know, as the CEO, I might've looked at uh, those core financials, the core metrics at a high level, and I might say, you know, everything looks good. However, if I start having some questions on things, I wanna see uh, particular, uh, dig into the details a bit more. I can have all sorts of different views of the data pulling from different systems with different metrics, and I can have that displayed to me in a very meaningful way. So in here, I could, as an example, look how my pipeline is performing. So I can see what the forecast is, uh, what the pipeline development has been over the past quarter, what are the top five um, movements and accounts, and what are the top 10 opportunities. And this, as an example, could be pulling from our CRM applications. It could be pulling from some data, could be coming from our ERPs. However, we can also input data with inside the board platform, because uh, as we'll go through in a moment, there's also budgeting planning capabilities that we could use to set targets and do our budgeting and planning that we might wanna to merge together with data that's coming with other systems. And so that's where board's very powerful is that it can merge data from different systems along with the planning data that you might be preparing directly in the platform. And so I can pull that all together. I can look at different scenarios and see how we're performing across the organization. From an operational standpoint, I might wanna see how we're doing in terms of headcount, what the breakdown has been. Obviously recruitment might, have, might be fairly critical. 
an organization might be growing, there might be particular skill sets that we need to hire for. And so with that, we can do our HR analytics where we're pulling data from our HRIS system. Could, some data could be coming from our payroll system, as well as the planning data that we would have been preparing with inside the board platform. So we might have been doing um, uh, our payroll plan, uh, planning our payroll budget with inside the board platform, which does all the very uh, the, the various uh, calculations in a very accurate manner. So whether it's payroll, taxes, uh, and benefits, still do all the calculations, as well as the planned headcounts that we would have had from there. And then we can merge all the data again together into one holistic view where we look at it and see how we're performing against budget, uh, how we're doing from a recruitment standpoint, uh, and what's the breakdown maybe within different uh, companies within the organization, different departments, or maybe uh, even position types. So to continue on, um, again, looking at more maybe some of the leading indicators around uh, what the pipeline's looking like, how we're doing from an operational standpoint, productivity, customer satisfaction, we might just wanna look at some standard financials as well. So with the board platform, as the fp &A team, we're preparing all of these different financial views, and with board, we can make that very automated, meaning that the um, uh, we're pulling data from our ERP system, so all of the chart, the chart of accounts, the um, uh, the trial balances, the GL transactions are coming into board, and they automatically update all of our financials. So there's particular logic you set up in the platform whether it's account ranges or dimension sets that we're applying to the different row logic that will feed the platform. And so the actuals get updated in the report. And then from a budgeting st standpoint, as we prepare our budgets and forecasts, all of our uh, reports will get updated as well. So as I showed in the different uh, dashboards where we're looking at budgets, forecasts, uh, comparisons against prior year, same idea on the financials. Everything will get updated automatically and we no longer have to send these out manually. And so here, just a quick example where we're seeing our P&L, the actual budgets, comparisons against prior year. And this is just one example. However, from a report creation standpoint, you can almost think of this as a pivot table. So those Excel junkies out there who uh, love to work with Excel, pivot and slice and dice the data different ways, same concept here. So we have whatever the granularity of the data is, we can display the data. So if we wanna look at the data going across the columns by department or by company, we wanna look at that by month, you name it. it. It's just pulling the data into the column access and splitting it out the way you want to. And then you can apply all sorts of different drill downs into the data. So in this case, I might be looking at sales and I wanna drill down. And what it does is I can specify a drill down view. So if I'm delivering this report to the executives and I know that there's particular interactive ways they wanna look at those different data points, I can have them drill into that item and see the breakdown automatically by company. And if they want to split it out and see the breakdown by specific GL accounts, and then look at trends, comparisons, top five companies as an example, how we're doing actuals against budget versus prior year, how we're doing against different in different verticals. It, it's very, very powerful. And you get all of the different breakdown uh, that would be needed by a consumer of the report. Again, gets us away from those static copies. And again, if a static copy is required, you can deliver that multiple different ways, similar to what I showed before, whether you're printing it out to PDF, Word, PowerPoint, and you can uh, export the data out to Excel or even set up a subscription. So that goes across the board, looking at financials. Uh, you might also have different variance analysis that you might be doing. So obviously the budget set, uh, we might have different slices of the variance, a budget that we look at to see how we're performing, maybe against different departments, different cost categories. And so whether we're displaying that in a very conditional formatting sense, uh, so those of you that work in Excel, similar concepts apply here. So you can set up different alerts and you can set up uh, heat maps and tree maps. And I can, as an example, see what our biggest budgeted item is and where our biggest variance is. We see we have a big negative variance here. I can drill into the data and see where those variances are coming from.
and I can filter based on any way I want to, if it's a specific location, business unit, however, whatever the granularity of the data is from an actuals and budget standpoint, you can merge all that together and display those different variance views of the, of the data. Now to show you a bit about the setup, um, so again, for the FP&A folks in the room, um, when we deliver this out to the, um, to the executive team, the idea is we set up these reports once, you have that presentation view with the different reports and dashboards and items that are most, most relevant to the executive team. And as we know, there's some work that goes on in the background as the finance team uh, to make sure that everything's coming together. So as we talked about, there's integration as the data flows in from our ERP system, it flows into the platform. From there, once it comes into the platform, there might, if we're, as an example, uh, multi-company and we might have different chart of accounts, you can set up different, um, a master chart of accounts if you need to, and if that's used for report writing, you can leverage that. Uh, CRG, we've developed this framework within Sideboard that actually does uh, range based uh, uh, calculations to look at your account range to actually build out your report. So based on the, uh, the layout of the financials, you can actually set up the account range and build all of that out. It's actually quite, quite powerful. So I'll show you that here, map accounts. So here's an example of an income statement. So in our GL structure, we might have particular account ranges. So we might say that this line item in the P&L, uh, if the uh, natural account is within this range, automatically map it to that report line. So now as the data is coming in from the ERP, it will look at those ranges and then um, it will update the financials without you having to manually map it. So it makes it very, very powerful. So as new accounts are added, you don't have to worry that things are falling out of the reports. If you're using this account range type logic or dimension logic, it ensures that everything's mapped. So it minimizes the work available to us. And if maybe a new account's added that's with outside, outside of the ranges, you can actually set up um, exception reports with inside board to show that maybe an account isn't mapped that falls outside of the range. And so all sorts of checks and balances can be set up as well. And if you have um, multi-currency companies, or it can facilitate consolidation. So it can do all of the CTA uh, type calculations. So it can convert everything into a common currency and do your cumulative translation adjustments. You can get that all into one common currency and even determine the uh, CTA uh, plug for you as well. So you see here coming in from multiple companies gets converted to a common currency. And then on top of that, it's calculating out the uh, cumulative translation adjustment based on the conversion of the different exchange rates. So again, quite powerful, all the buildup. However, once we set up the logic for the reports, we have the data coming into the platform uh, all of those different uh, dashboards and reports that we would have set up, say for the uh, executive leadership team or the business leaders, it minimizes the maintenance that we actually have to do because all the automation integrations and business logic that we've set up, uh, it allows us as a finance team to, while we administer the, the application, we make sure that everything's flowing through, we can spend more time on the analysis, building out the commentary, building out more analytical views of the data, as opposed to having to do all those uh, manual components that we had to do before where we were getting dumps of data from uh, say our accounting system, pulling it together in Excel, building out our P&Ls, worrying about uh, manual uh, error, all those things, uh, broken formulas that we had before that we get rid of. And it, it, and it makes a huge world of difference being able to leverage that as opposed to having to um, do it manually month over month, every quarter, every year, especially around audit time. It allows us to have all the schedules available to us and even can reduce the amount of time the auditors have to spend on uh, reviewing the financials because they don't have to go through all of the different spreadsheets and things that we're doing manually. They can trust in the automation and the proofs that have been set out 
to reduce the amount of time that they need to spend around that because they know that the controls are in place. Then from a planning and budgeting standpoint, obviously all the financial stuff happens, but uh, we go through our planning process uh, every year and we then do rolling forecasts as an example. There might be particular steps in the, the budget that we're doing. We might have a specific workflow that we're following as well. So again, this can be highly tailored to meet your organization. So it might be going through different steps, cost center preparation, director review, getting signed off by VPs. And then um, as we go through that process and we're doing our actual budgeting, the different, whether you're doing this horizontally or vertically, uh, or if you're doing it uh, very decentralized or centralized, board can be deployed multiple different ways. But the idea is you set up all of the security restrictions in the sense that there's people that have access to say particular business units or cost centers or departments. And then in the planning process, maybe they have access to the sales planning, but they don't have access to the CapEx planning or the cost center planning, or maybe they don't have access to the payroll planning. And so you can deploy that multiple different ways, whether it's centralized or de decentralized. And then they complete their budget, they fill it out, um, whether they look at a P&L view of the data or they have a very different view, it can be laid out multiple different ways. But the idea here is that you can build the template exactly how you need it in board, laid out to meet your exact needs, whether it's a simple data entry te uh, template with commentary, you can add visuals onto your, into your templates you can add uh, calculations as an example. So if I want to calculate in this case, say direct cost or that are associated with revenues, so it will calculate that out for me. And then some other examples as well. If I go back to that PNL view, um, I'll quickly show you an example here. So if I'm looking at uh, maybe some of my departmental expenses, uh, let's just look at this. This will bring me again to a different template that we might use for OPEX planning. And again, this is tailored to meet your organizational needs. But in that, I might have the departments that I have access to, the GL accounts that I can budget against. And then again, some commentary. I can input the data. I can do uh, spread methods across. I can do top down adjustments so that I did a thousand across. Say I want to make an adjustment here. Uh, where I need to get this down to 45,000, I can input 45,000 at the total level. There's 4,500 as I did there. I'll well, add another zero, and then it'll still break it back proportionally for me. I can save that. The graphicals get updated below. I can even choose to use the Microsoft Office add-in, where if I want to actually take this out to Excel, if I'm traveling, if I'm not going to have access to Wi-Fi and I need to do some offline preparation of the budget, I can actually use this template, prepare the data offline, write it back to board, and then it will update my uh, planning, my budget uh, right away as soon as I connect it back to uh, uh, the internet. And then, of course, you can do your, pers your personnel budgeting, so all of your personnel planning with your payroll taxes and rates. So data comes from your HRIS and payroll systems. You can set the schedules for when people are uh, working, it'll prorate salaries correctly. You can do uh, allocations, so if you need to allocate people out to different departments. And then you get all of your personnel reporting, your payroll budget reporting, and it's highly accurate because it's uh, calculated right down, it calculates out the caps correctly, get all of the data, headcount views, you name it. Then of course, your CapEx planning, so if you have different assets you need to purchase, different months, it will calculate out the depreciation for you and make sure it's hitting the right GL accounts using the right depreciation method. And then if you even need to do uh, cash flow planning, you can do that as well. If you need to do um, even debt financing, equity financing, you can set that all up in the platform and calculate out all the correct calculations with the different schedules. It's uh, very, very, very powerful. All right, so I'm going to wrap it up there. I know there's a couple of questions, so I'm just going to get to that. So bear with me for a moment. Okay, first question I see here. Does board offer a test sandbox environment? Yes, that's actually a very good question. So as with any other 
platform that we rely on in our organization, mission critical applications. As you manage doing upgrades and uh, you might want to have a specific sandbox environment where you test stuff out, you can subscribe to a sandbox environment on top of your production environment. Another question is, uh, in your services, do you offer a review of your current processes to suggest best practices? Practices, yes, 100%. We do that in all of our engagements. So us, CRG, as your premier board partner, and actually this is a perfect slide for this, uh, we cover everything from an expertise, from financial consolidations, building additional models, troubleshooting, fine tuning, uh, integrations, you, you name it. Uh, so we, uh, we've worked across multiple industries, so we make sure that we do provide and suggest our best practices and make you see things maybe even a different way, challenge your thoughts and make sure things are uh, deployed uh, the right way. And uh, as a reminder, make sure you're registered for the CO CFO Bootcamp series. Uh, if you go to crgroup.com slash CFO dash bootcamp, you can sign up for becoming a model CFO. Uh, session two, are you getting ready for the third revolution of FP&A? And session three is data alchemy. So please make sure to sign up. Thank you very much. And if you want to register for a demo of board or schedule a free budgeting assessment, uh, you can uh, go to our, actually reach me at uh, CRG at crgroup.com, or you can go to our webpage, crgroup.com slash board. Thank you very much. <laughs>